What is up guys, welcome back to another Geek or What video and today we're going to be taking a look at this and this and seeing just exactly what happens when you combine a relatively thin form factor gaming laptop uh, with a sort of full fat RTX 2060 graphics card. Can this compete with a desktop containing an RTX 2060? Let's dive in and take a look. Now I'd also like to take this moment to remind you if you haven't already liked this video, please do, it helps me out so, so much. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to MSI for sponsoring today's video and making it possible so you can find out the result of these tests because I am genuinely really, really intrigued. Now I think the best way to take a look at this laptop and exactly the components inside is to take a screwdriver to it, albeit a slightly smaller screwdriver than normal. Now, much like Blue Peter here in the UK, some of you probably won't understand that reference, I have taken some of the screws out earlier to make things, theoretically, a little bit easier. Now, this bit is slightly nerve-wracking, I must admit, you sort of have to go for it, and don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. I'm not suggesting I do know what I'm doing, but you get the point. Now there's probably a tool you can get that makes this easier, but I haven't got one, so fingernails shall have to suffice. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, secretly I do know what I'm doing. Now, taking off that bottom panel reveals to the untrained eye something that looks quite complicated, but actually, for me, this is really familiar. And for those of you that have built your own systems, uh, this isn't gonna look overly foreign. I'm gonna put it down to save any accidents. But basically, what we've got here is we've got heat pipes that lead uh, to two symmetrical fan setups, one on either side, uh, which are gonna help to exhaust air out of your system, that hot air, from the GPU and the CPU chip. So those copper heat pipes are basically transferring the heat from the heat sink and the CPU and the GPU out to the fans to be dispersed and eventually shoved out of your laptop into the atmosphere. Uh, we've also got on this motherboard here a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda Pro hard drive. It's a two and a half inch drive and provides the mass storage for this build alongside a 128 gigabyte uh, Kingston SSD M.2 drive in this particular model. Now, one thing it's also got uh, is a PCIe 3.0 X4 SSD slot that's unused. So you can pop in another M.2 2280 drive uh, if you'd like to, to expand storage even further or uh, even actually upgrade the existing drive drives uh, if you so desire. This particular model has also got uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM with a 2666 megahertz clock speed, which for laptop RAM dims is not too shabby. And MSI have installed this in a dual channel configuration, which is gonna give us a few more performance points, a little bit more frame rate, which on a small form factor power efficient machine is really, really important. We've also got Intel's 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and the range on that is Pretty fantastic, I must say. Alongside uh, an NVIDIA RTX 2060 GPU, more on that later, uh, and an Intel Core i7 8th Gen uh, 8750H, which is a mobile i7 chip. Now, the CPU here actually is pretty powerful for a laptop CPU. We've not only got eight cores, but 16 threads, keeping the multi-threaded performance really quite fantastic, and a base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz. Whoa, 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 James. A base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz, that doesn't sound great. And now you would be right. However, it does have a turbo boost clock speed of up to a staggering 4.1 gigahertz, more than the Ryzen 5 chip, that's a better view, in this uh, $1,000-ish system that I did a video on not too recently in the card section here. And now what that means is the CPU is not always going to run at those speeds. 2.2 is the standard rated speed. Uh, but particularly with a laptop like this, with a really beefy cooling setup, it shouldn't be thermal throttling and it should get a bit of headway uh, for that turbo boost clock speed. And that's evident in the gaming benchmarks, which you'll see a little bit later on in today's video. Now you'll also find in the top left hand corner of this laptop front panel connectors, like a desktop PC, but run a bit more efficiently, shall we say, which sit next to the NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics card. But what's the gig with that 2060 that I've mentioned so many times in today's video and of course in the title? Is it a full fat RTX 2060? Yes and 
Kind of no, but more on that in a second. Now, the NVIDIA RTX lineup of graphics cards represent a major step change in performance. Not only do you get massive improvements of performance widespread across the board over the predecessing uh, 2060, 2070, 2070 Ti, etc, etc. You also get a host of new features exclusive to that RTX lineup, including uh, ray tracing and DLSS. Now, ray tracing was the flagship feature, and I talked about this a lot in my RTX 2060 review, linked in the card section here. But basically, what it does is it changes the way light is dealt with in games, in an in-game environment, meaning reflections and shadows get a whole load more uh, realistic, more believable, and everything is sharper and just much more immersive. You can see this with the side-by-side -side comparisons that I've done, and it really is a major, major improvement. Now, ray tracing, of course, did have a massive performance here. Uh, on your frame rate, which is where DLSS came in. DLSS, which is better optimized for these RTX cards, uh, changes the way of, improves game performance scaling basically at those higher resolutions and performance to offset uh, the performance impact that arguably ray tracing has. Now, not only do you get that, but you also get NVIDIA's inbuilt RTX a H.265 encoder, which is going to mean you can sort of record gameplay or stream gameplay with low performance overheads. Now, in most ways, this RTX 2060 chip is exactly the same as you'll find in the large graphics card, but runs at a slightly slower speed uh, to cause account for the cooling restrictions that any laptop is going to uh, impose, of course. Now, thermals are massive. Things can only run at a certain temperature, and after that, they're going to thermal throttle, which is where they slow down to stop themselves overheating and ultimately sacrifice a lot of speed. The beefy cooling setups here are going to help to keep it cool and running at its maximum at a slightly lower rated speed. MSI have also got a couple of cool tricks under their belt when it comes to cooling. Uh, they're claiming uh, much better cooling performance than the previous generations, and you get a button on the top of your motherboard where you can actually uh, run the fans and toggle them at 100% speed. Now, why would you want to do that? Now, think about it. Uh, most people game with a gaming headset or headphones on, particularly late at night, and if you don't want any sacrifice of performance and you've got headphones on, you can't hear the machine anyway, it makes sense to run the fans at 100%. And honestly, it's a feature I don't know why no one else has thought of uh, just yet. Uh, this beefy cooling as well also allows for overclocking of both the CPU and the GPU, which can be done through MSI's fantastic included software suite. The laptop doesn't come with a whole load of bloatware, uh, which I love, but the software it does come with is super useful for monitoring, system activity, system overheads, and of course, temperatures. Now, scooching over slightly and reassembling the laptop, which I'm sure MSI will be very happy about, uh, allows me to reveal a couple of its exterior features. We've got a keyboard here created by SteelSeries that is frankly, for a laptop, fantastic. You've got a decent amount of key travel. It doesn't claim to be mechanical or mechanical or feel mechanical. It's just a really solid tactile chiclet keyboard that's nice to type on and comes fully equipped with a number pad onto the right hand side, uh, which I'm sure a lot of gamers will be happy about, providing potentially a further array of programmable keys. The keyboard is backlit in red and it's pretty even in terms of its backlighting. The font is gamery, so it isn't going to be to everyone's taste, uh, but you can of course turn down or up that backlighting uh, as you choose to sort of dim those letters or dim the keys in general. You've got a webcam up the top here as well, which is a better place uh, than having it at the bottom, which some laptops do nowadays. It's not looking up your nose, put it that way. Uh, and a 15 inch display. This particular model has got a 60 hertz refresh rate, though it's also available with a three mil response time or 120 hertz panel. And the same goes for the larger 17 inch version of this laptop, either a 60 hertz or a three mil 120 hertz panel is available. Uh, the 120 hertz panel probably is going to be more suited to the CSGO or the Warcraft League of Legends players, as the latest AAA titles will need settings turning down in order to utilize the high refresh rate. Finally, the last things to note on the exterior of this laptop, aside from its really solid ventilation, is the IO. You've got Kensington Lock, Ethernet, HDMI, mini display port, which is great for high resolution display outputs, USB-C, separate headphone and mic jacks, 
further USB over on the other side, and an SD card readout, which is much appreciated. Prosumers could use this laptop with that beefy Core i7 and powerful CUDA accelerated uh, graphics card uh, for some prosumer or professional tasks. So that's much appreciated. And that sits next to a beefy power jack. And I mean beefy, that is a lot of power that this machine, of course, requires uh, for all of the hardware inside. But that, of course, is enough of me rambling on just how well does this system perform. Now, as always, I'm actually going to overlay some gaming performance minus the frame rates for the time being, so you can actually see the experience you're able to get on this machine. I think people do genuinely get too hung up on frame rates, and obviously the frame rate depends on your visual settings. The higher the settings are, the lower your frame rate's going to be, and often it's sort of an event of diminishing returns, if you know what I mean. I will, of course, also pop up some graphs on your screen now, though, so if you're more of a numbers guy, I will have you covered there as well. While you're seeing those, if you do want to check the latest pricing on this laptop, you can find that at the Amazon links in the description below uh, for a range of different regions, if you would like to pick this machine up. But that, I think, just about wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, give it a big old light ray, and I am sweating here. We're in the middle of a British heat wave in June, which is painful, I must admit. If you enjoyed today's video, as I said, give it a big old light rating, get subscribed, and ding dong that notification bell, and join the notification squad so you never miss another video. As always, though, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video. What's a long pause? Sorry for the long pause.